This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys? Vincent here from the creative dojo.net. Welcome to another episode of Dojo TV where we talk about all things motion design and visual effects. So for our first set of news, we have a video by Evan Abrams. He is an awesome YouTube creator like myself who does a lot of motion graphics videos on YouTube. Really cool guy, but the guy in San Francisco. But he did a really cool video on color management and how it relates to After Effects. So understanding all these set of instructions and color spaces on color, gamma, white point, and how it relates to the capturing device that you're using, the camera, the editing workflow, the software, is all kind of complicated. So he talks about a lot of these things, such as color spaces, sRGB, Rec 709, ACES, and settings inside After Effects, and kind of workflow tips on how you can kind of maintain your color space and actually work with your color so that what you're seeing is actually what everyone else is kind of seeing generally as well. So a really awesome video by him, kind of breaks down the basics of color management and color workflow within After Effects and other software as well. So check it out over on his YouTube channel. So our second story is about Particle Illusion 2021. So actually, Boris Effects actually released a new version recently of this new piece of software. We did a video on it before, so links again will be in the video description down below. But this is a new version, and they've actually kind of integrated a more 3D particle space for the particle asset. So before it's traditionally a 2D kind of environment, now it's fully 3D. And if you actually use a continuum plugin version, which is not the standalone version, it's a paid version, that integrates into After Effects and kind of integrate into your 3D scenes um, with the paid plugin. They also introduced a new turbulence setting to add more turbulence to your particles, um, a connect option to really connect particles together using lines so you can kind of create like a kind of like a plexus look or so. They also improve their balance and deflect your kind of algorithm. And so basically it works more fluidly and it works more naturally. You can add more variation to it and randomness to it and behaves more like what you would expect. And again, the standalone version, which you can download right now, can be downloaded for free. So you have the full-fledged version of Park Illusion, so you can mess around with it, do whatever you want, and then go ahead and render it and bring it into After Effects. It's not as flexible as if you had the actual plugin version, which integrates more into your After Effects, but this is a fantastic free alternative to a full-fledged particle system. If you don't have money for that kind of stuff, this is a great way to start adding particles to your scene, kind of messing around with particles um, for free. Now the next set of news is actually from School of Motion. The next couple of stories are actually from School of Motion. I talk about School of Motion all the time. But should honestly, Joey, if you're listening to this, you guys need to sponsor me because I plug your stuff all the freaking time. Um, but the first presentation is by Kyle Hamrick from the Adobe Max 2020. He did an awesome presentation for Adobe Max called Beyond the Basis of Adobe After Effects. It's really aimed towards intermediate After Effects users. He covers some really awesome tricks and workflow tips, pre-production conceptual phase stuff, cross app workflows and much more so check that video out below to learn some cool tips it's always cool to watch professionals do their thing you can learn a lot of things from watching other people the next story is by rachel raid from school of motion she demonstrates the concept and the important idea of anticipation for animation so this idea of anticipation gives energy life and realism to your animations it can be used to really add and emphasize certain motions so she'll talk about how to how to apply it to animations and shapes how it kind of fits in long form animations and when not to use anticipation. So this is a great tutorial for learning the fundamental concepts of anticipation and some of the basic principles of animation to be a better animator. Um, so you can apply this to a lot of things in your animations right now, pretty cool stuff. The next School of Motion video is by Patrick L. And he shows you the fundamentals of photogrammetry. He basically shows you how he generated a fully fledged 3D model of a shoe, which is fully textured using scans and pictures straight from his iPhone. He'll show you how to set this up in your camera environment, how to take pictures, how to generate the mesh, cleaning up the mesh, removing all the noise, and texturing it based off of the photos and scans created from your iPhone to create a very detailed 3D asset. Now this is very, very awesome because he's essentially showing you some really advanced techniques that really high-end visual effects studios use to really scan in detailed assets for 3D work. And he's doing it with an iPhone. So you can pretty much use it with your cell phone, your DSLR, your point and shoot camera, pretty much anything you have to create a pretty awesome detailed scan 3D asset for your work and your 3D workflow. And this is awesome because I suck at texturing and this is a fantastic way to kind of bring in real life stuff, in this particular case a shoe, into your scene. I can only imagine what else you can do now that phones are incorporating LiDAR and other sorts of depth scanning stuff within their cameras to create really awesome depth and visual effects. Really cool stuff, check it out. The last School of Motion video is a kind of like a workflow podcast video with the folks over at Action VFX and Creator Vault. Again, they are friends of our channel. They, are, they create awesome stuff, huge fan of their stuff. Um, but basically, they kind of show you guys some cool visual effects breakdowns that they did, how to composite some of their elements into scenes, such as fires and all sorts of cool stuff, car smoke, details, assets, 
and really talk about the origins of their companies and how they kind of came to be. So this is a really interesting podcast. Don't forget to check out some of their free assets. They post a lot of free goodies and freebies and stock assets for you guys to download. So check them out down below. So before we go any further, we have to pay some bills. And I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Now Squarespace is the only platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So speaking of action VFX, Clayton Walker actually shows you how to composite and edit some realistic breaking glass in this particular action scene. It's a great tutorial if you're starting out to get into VFX and compositing, and the techniques can be applied to many different scenarios like breaking windows, glasses, bullet shots, all cool stuff over there. Again, check their site down below for free awesome freebies and assets. The next video is from the folks over at the Pixel Lab. They create some pretty awesome 3D assets and elements, but they did a video going over a script called Pick Focus Distance from Lassie. It's a quick tool that allows you to better pick your focus instead of twirling through all the camera settings in Cinema 4D. It's a lot faster, it's a cool script. Um, obviously, it's not a huge deal if you're a Redshift or Octane user who already have this feature built in, but if you're rocking the traditional Cinema 4D renderer or a physical renderer, this would be a nice tool to have, so check it out down below. Again, it's a free tool. So our last story is about an article over at Premium Beat. We always talk about Premium Beat as well. So if you guys are listening, feel free to sponsor the Creative Dojo. We always push and plug your stuff. But basically they did an article about Fusion, how it compares to After Effects, Fusion Studio versus the one bundled in Resolve, which by the way is free, which is very, very, very awesome. They talk about layer-based compositing versus node-based compositing, some of the limitations within After Effects and how effects are applied, third-party plug-in support, the pros and cons, and ultimately which program is right for you. Again, it doesn't hurt to try. They have a free version. Let me know what you guys think down below if you prefer Fusion or After Effects or if you use other stuff like HitFilm. I'm really interested to know. That's pretty much it, guys, for this video. If you guys like videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos like this, and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. My name is Vincent Nguyen from The Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.